Shut up and sit down. Welcome back to No One Asked Us, episode 39 of the show. I'm Craig Cho. That is Logan Lee, joining you remotely from our varying destinations. Uh, episode 39, give us a follow at No One Asked Us Pod, at Craig W. Cho, at the Logan Lee. That is all our Twitter accounts. Uh, no show Instagram. My Instagram is Craig W. Cho as well. This is at the Logan Lee 91. Uh, we got a YouTube channel. No one asked us. Uh, Gmail on the screen above. All that good stuff. Hit us up. Uh, any questions, comments, anything you'd like for us to discuss. We're 39 episodes in, and we're switching it up. Uh, we've been talking college football at the top of the show every week for the last two months, three months. We're switching it up. It's basketball season now, boys and girls. It is here. There's big news coming out of Illinois basketball just within the last couple hours. Uh, as we record this on a Monday afternoon, Eastern time, evening, Eastern time, about 5.30 or 6 o'clock Eastern time. So he is Logan Lee. Uh, quickly, how was your weekend, Logan? Do anything special? <laughs> you get that all out? out just he had a lot word to vomit, say right man. there. Word yeah, vomit. Just a lot of word vomit. Uh, good weekend was good. Got to go home, see some family, help, uh, help my brother and his, his wife move into their new house. So uh busy busy time for moving and cleaning and all that stuff this weekend they came up a couple years ago and helped us move into our house so i just felt like it was you know i returned the favor plus my youngest brother moved into cameron's house that he was moving out of so it was just kind of a you know a revolving door of of moving and cleaning this weekend and then uh did some trick-or-treating with with my nephew on on sunday night so so that was kind of fun to do that around oakwood that's what I was going to ask. You said you moved your brother and his wife into the house. Does yes. the nephew stay yes. in the house with Parker? No, no, no. He, oh, okay. he moved. He moved. Okay. Um, he moved as well. His bedroom was <laughs> the very first thing we got taken care of. Um, but yeah, so that was good. Then trick or treating. And then as soon as we got in the car on the way home before baseball started, Christmas music. Yeah, of course. Just going to say it. Just going to say course. it. Tis the season, yeah. Craig. Tis the season. Yeah. Merry Christmas. Yeah, for, for you, the season started in July, like 4th of July, you hit Christmas. No, November 1st, Craig. Okay. Okay. I mean, I don't I don't ever actually ever get out of the mood. I can watch a Christmas movie year round. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I'll still occasionally throw on Christmas music at any time, but I'm not like I'm not into Christmas spirit year round. I forgot about this. So you just said something last week when my parents were here. Yeah, I started getting ready or doing something around the house. So I tossed dad the remote. I think I took the dogs out for a walk or something. I tossed dad the remote and I came back in. Hallmark Christmas movie was on. I was like, what? What are you doing? (laughs) I just it was funny. What I love it. What did you dress up as? You went trick or treating. What did you dress up as? I I, I did not. I did not dress up. I, uh, I, I was just I was just there for the fun. I've not dressed up for Halloween in. I, I don't know. I could not tell you the last time that I dressed up for Halloween. My last so, time was unofficial at SIU. One of the years that, yeah. And, and I was never, I never really got into it then either. Yeah. Um, I, I've never really been a Halloween person. Let me just get that out in the open. The Halloween's done now or the holiday is done now. I've, I've just never been a Halloween person. Um, so I've just never really gotten into the whole dressing up and things. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, I did it a few times in college. It's very spur of the moment type of things. But I uh, haven't really done it much since then. Um, I have this regret, like long ago, that I should have just purchased a Buddy the Elf costume and done and it every year. Just every year. Yeah. Um, but I have. Yeah. I, I say that every year, and I never buy it. And yeah. I'm not going to now. Um, but yeah, so that was that was that. Uh, I see you've kept the mustache. So um, Ted Lasso is here to stay. Uh, well, you, I, I, you haven't done it yet. So I assume you're not going to do this entire show in a Ted Lasso impersonation. No. Where's your believe sign hanging up behind I, you? I didn't rehearse any like lines from the show. I didn't practice the voice. Like I just, I just dressed up, <coughs> dressed up as Ted and it went over really well. The party I went to, everyone loved it. And I was very excited because it was, we went to Atlanta this weekend. Uh, Thursday through Sunday, we were in Atlanta at uh, Christie's brother's house. He just moved heck down a, there. Heck of a time to be in Atlanta. <laughs> exactly. Um, 
they moved down there in July or August. And um, so we went down and visited. So we didn't know anyone at the party. It was at their neighbor's house, literally right across the driveway. We knew no one. And as soon as I walked in, everyone was like, that is perfect. That is so good. So I was happy about that. Um, but yeah, I'm keeping, I have the, I still have the mustache, the Ted Lasso full mustache is for those listening is still on my face. Um, don't know how long it's going to last. I want to, I want to try and write it out, but sooner or later, either I'm going to get sick of it or Christy is going to break up with me or, or kill me if I keep no, it. So it's no shave November. I told her that too. It is no shave so, November. So I could get away with it for this entire I month. I mean, you're kind of in it now. Yeah. You kinda, yeah. Aren't you glad that you finally started watching Ted Lasso? Yeah, dude, it's so good. It's so good. I, I want more and there's no more. So I might go back and rewatch. Yeah. One of the guys at the party said he's rewatched it five times. I was like, ah, that's a little much, but I have, I respect, I respect a, you. I'm not much of a rewatcher on shows, but uh, yeah, I, res- I respect respect that game yeah ted lasso is definitely the uh the adult male um costume of du jour for the uh for the holiday and i believe i saw a lot of cruella uh as the the female that's what my sister-in-law was going as and lennox was dressed as an almation so um you know that was adorable but uh yeah so you were you were part of the part of the mini i saw a lot of ted lasso's on, on the internet there was a, quite a bit of them. Um, speaking of the weekend, do you have a moment of the week this week? I knew you were going to ask me that, you know, because we do this every week. We do this moment of the week thing where uh, we leave the show with it. In fact, and Logan um, never has one and Logan never has one. Um, no, but I do want to give a shout out to a loyal listener, uh, Aaron Patterson, who just that got works. engaged over the weekend. OK, and. I, he, t- he messaged me about every week talking about stuff with the show. So I know he's listening to this. So I want to send a congratulations out to him uh, for getting engaged. So I'm going to call that my moment of the week. So congrats to you, Aaron. Good well, luck. that's funny because my moment of the week is also a shout out. Yeah. To, to my brother who got engaged this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> so that works out very well. Yeah. My brother. Coleman. All right. My brother Coleman got engaged this weekend. So congrats to uh congrats to both of them. That's, That's perfect. awesome. <laughs> wow, that worked out really well. Unplayed. All right. Perfect. Great. Um <laughs> we are also trying something new this week. Um to go along with moment of the week, we want to have some listener viewer, some sort of interaction. So we're gonna ask a question at the top of every show that we will discuss the results of last week's question on next week's episode uh working title we don't have a type name of it we're just going to ask you guys a question off the top of the show uh put it on our twitter at no one asks us pod you can go vote for it um there will this week there is an other option there's three options with an other and then if you if you vote other just comment on who you think it's going to be so as i said we're moving on to basketball now so who do you think is going to win the big 10 are we going tournament or regular season regular season regular season who's going to win the big 10 regular season men's basketball uh, tournament or when I just said not tournament who's going to win the men's big 10 basketball regular season title we're going to give you the option of Michigan Purdue and Illinois and then other or the, the field <laughs> yeah or the field um, so yeah we'll, we'll put that up when we post the show or or, or maybe tonight before we put, get the show out, get the show released to you guys um, who's your vote so we're going to talk about uh, who we are going to go with here later in the show although i think we kind of discussed that a couple oh, we think we did ago. this last week or a couple, a couple weeks ago, ago. and yeah, i don't gonna... remember who i said so we'll see if i say the yeah. same answer or not. all right so there's our question this week uh vote on it and let us know what you think heading into men's basketball we do have some huge news kofi coburn is suspended for the first three games of the season just released uh a short time ago um, from illinois athletics of course Everyone pretty much assumed this was going to happen. Everyone knew this was going to happen. So this is not a shock. Um, Three games does surprise me a little bit. We'll get into that. But um, I just want to read the quotes from from the release that all the Illini beat writers are are tweeting out. Um, Actually, let's get into what he did first. Um, He declared for the draft, as we all know. So he went on the Players Trunk, which is a great website started by a couple former uh, division or college athletes and managers where – college athletes can go and and sell their old gear 
they sell their old gear uh, to make a little money because uh, they get so much stuff throughout their career that um, they, they don't need all of it. So they sell it and, um, and get a little cash. So Kofi declared for the draft and uh, went ahead and put some of his stuff on the player's trunk. And this was before this was in May or June. This was before NIL took effect. So, At that point, when he did that, he forfeited his college eligibility and he was not going to come back to Illinois. He could not come back to Illinois because he profited off his name, image and likeness. Well, as we know, he pulled his NIL passed. He pulled his name out of the draft. So some thought since NIL passed that uh, he might not get penalized or uh, he'll just have to give the money back or or something to that effect, which um, that does kind of play into this as well Uh, so he suspended three games and he also i think is required to give the money that he made off of those sales to a charity of his choice Um, so the quote from brad underwood in the release today we are disappointed with the three game suspension because there were unprecedented factors and altered timelines related to his decision to ultimately withdraw from the NBA draft and return to school. Once Kofi had a full understanding of where he stood regarding the draft, he made an educated decision to return to school, work towards his degree and continue improving his game. That said, we understand and respect the NCAA's decision in this matter, and we will move forward accordingly. As always, Kofi's attitude and outlook remain upbeat and positive. He is focused on helping his teammates prepare for the season, and we can't wait to have him rejoin us on the court. Coburn will still be able to practice with the team during his suspension and uh, before he returns. So, as I said, not surprising. What's your initial thoughts of uh, Kofi Coburn being suspended for three games? Oh, boy. Where to begin? Um <laughs> Well, let's just get this out of the way. If this happened any year prior to this season, it probably wouldn't be as big of a deal mm-hmm. um, because he was uh, – the the reason that it's more annoying now is because of the name, image, and likeness stuff. Had this happened in an, a year where that wasn't a factor, a la any year prior to this year – He would have declared for the draft, sold his stuff, made his money, came back to college. Okay, you did it. It's illegal. You're getting suspended. The problem is now that what he did is no longer illegal. Mm -hmm. And it is perfectly fine for him to make money, money off of himself. However, he did it at the time where it was still not legal (laughs) within the NCAA. So... It's kind of a, it is a sticky situation. Um, We did see this coming. I think anybody that follows college basketball or follows Illinois basketball closely enough knew that this was probably going to happen. As you said, three games does kind of surprise me a little bit, but I I don't really know how you judge this stuff. I don't really know how you make the decision. Um, It stings a little bit because the third game is actually, you know, that's a marquee matchup. They're going to go to Marquette uh, for game three Um, games, one and two. Eh. Okay. Whatever. Um, Assuming they play better than they did last Saturday or Friday, whatever day that was, they should be fine. Um, Marquette obviously is a different story. Um, So yeah, three games, three games does surprise me a little bit. Um, I, I haven't continued to follow this story, but there's, I've seen several people post things about how, uh, what sort of suspension Mark few might get for driving under the influence. Yeah. And there's been some other things that have come up where, you know, those situations you would think would uh, call for a bigger, bigger punishment than yeah. what Kofi did. Uh, but sometimes that's not how it always works out. And it's just kind of the NCAA being the NCAA. Yeah. Um, my thoughts on it, what he did at the time that he did it is was, was illegal. Um, I mean, it wasn't illegal. It's just he was still an amateur, and he's still an amateur now, technically. Mm-hmm. So it sucks. It's not ideal. Three games is definitely not ideal. Uh, but as we've said, we we all kind of saw this coming. Not really shocked anybody. So let's just uh, take it on the chin and move on, I guess. Yeah. That's kind of my um, thought. 
first three games are hosting Jackson State and Arkansas State. And then, like Logan said, that third game is the Gavit tip-off game at Marquette on November 15th. Um, f- the first game is November 9th. I don't know the date of that that uh, Arkansas State game. I would assume like the 12th. November 12th and yeah. then the 15th is Marquette. Yeah. Okay, so there's those three games. Um, as And this might seem ridiculous, but three games seems crazy, but I would not have been surprised with two games. Is that no. Does that make sense? I think I was expecting. I know to. it's it's only one game difference, but I feel like it's a big difference, and maybe it's because think, of who that third game is. Yeah, I think that's. I don't know, and I, I'm I can't like, I'm not I haven't I'm not a historian when it comes to this stuff. I'm not going to sit here and try to go through all these suspensions, these likeness, these suspensions yeah. related to stuff like this to see what they've all been. Um, but I mean, yeah, it's, I'm sure that probably has something to do with it. That yeah. the third game is actually against somebody. Uh, you know, a legitimate opponent, more or less. And uh, they're just making a statement because they can do that now. They have no control over anything else when it comes to lame, lame, name, image, and likeness. Uh, but this this is the NCAA's last hurrah. So yeah. <laughs> they're yeah. going to take advantage of it and punish the, the first team All-American for, for three games for making a few bucks off of his mer- his own his own stuff. <laughs> so, so whatever. The focus now turns who takes his starting spot in his minutes. Is it uh, Omar Payne swap? Does, I mean, Omar Payne only played nine minutes on Friday night. I think I – well, it might be Coleman would be my yeah, guess. I did, me too. Um, I think it will be Coleman, but I think him and Omar will get the minutes. But I think yeah. Coleman will start. Yeah, my so, guess. I would have said Omar Payne going into it, but the way from, from what it looks like from Friday night, the exhibition looks like yeah. Coleman's getting those minutes. So yeah, I would imagine Coleman starts. Um, I mean, unless they just go real small, which I don't think that would happen. Um, yeah, I would say Coleman probably starts and him and Omar pick up the minutes. Yeah, would be I my think guess. that's the best bet based on what we saw in the two uh, exhibition games. Speaking of the second and final exhibition game, was Friday night against Indiana, Pennsylvania. Uh, Illinois wins it 94-79, but it, it was a pretty close game. Uh, I know Logan said you didn't watch any of it. Is that right? I No. Was was I able to watch it? Was it on anything? It was, other? It was on BTN+. Do I have, have a paid Plus. subscription? Yeah. Do I have to yeah. pay for that? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I didn't pay for that. <laughs> no. Um. They did win it, but it, it was a close game pretty much throughout. Illinois ended up pulling away uh, very late in the second half. Uh, the starters for that one, uh, Coleman Hawkins got the start because Demonte Williams and Austin Hutcherson missed the game. They did not play. So uh, Hawkins got the start. Trent Frazier left the game after, before the first media timeout, I think, with a shoulder. Uh, have not heard anything on his status. He did not play the rest of the game, so – uh, something to watch there, but he was on the bench, still in uniform. Uh, didn't seem too serious, but we'll wait and see. Uh, maybe they hold him out of these first couple of games too, because uh, they are very winnable games. Um, let's see points here. Uh, Kofi scored twenty-one points. Uh, Plummer had sixteen. Coleman Hawkins had sixteen. Curbelo had fourteen. Grandison had thirteen. Um, and th- they got the bulk of the minutes. It was a very short rotation on Friday. Um, not a lot of not a lot of bench minutes available. Um, but yeah, uh, another exhibition that you learned a little bit more than you did against uh, St. Francis. Th- this yeah. is a pretty good. I think they're Division Two. Yeah, correct. Um, uh, it's a pretty good Division Two program. Um, so they they put up a fight. They had some size. Uh, Curbelo did have a triple double. Points, assists, and turnovers. He had 10 turnovers, 12 assists, and 14 points. Uh, 10 of the 15 team turnovers. So that's a that's work in what, progress. That's not what you want. <laughs> that's not exactly what you like to see. Um, but that's I, that's kind of what you get with Curbelo. I mean, yeah. I didn't – I watched some. I had it on my computer. But like I said, we were with Christie's family. World Series was on. We were in Atlanta. Uh, with the World Series going on in Atlanta. Uh, actually, we were in Marietta. We never made it to Atlanta. Um, but I had it on and, and watched bits and pieces, but wasn't fully invested in it. So I didn't see what kind of turnovers they were. Um, but anytime you have double digits in a turnover column for a player, 
That's a problem. You need to fix it. You remember when you tweeted about him and yes. sparked the whole Andre Curbelo turnaround that yeah. really fueled the rest of that season for Illinois? I also tweeted about Brandon Peters on Saturday and <laughs> oh. he ended up having a pretty good game. <laughs> we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, so yeah, the, Illinois wins their two exhibitions. Don't learn a whole lot other than, you know, what you're going to get good, but you're going to, you're going to get a lot of good, but you're going to get some bad with Andre Carbello. He's going to have turnovers. I think Underwood was pretty upset with his play on the defensive end. I think they exposed him quite a bit on the defensive end from what I saw from the post game comments. Um, so, I mean, this team's beatable. We know that. I know we're hyping them up like they're the best team in the country, but the team is beatable. Not. Um, but yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Um, let's, let's get more into our, uh, our preview here. Also the day we released our episode, um, last week, the big 10 preseason honors came out because timing is great on no one asked us something will come out probably huge tomorrow when we release this and, and uh, we'll miss it. But Kofi was named Big Ten Preseason Player of the Year, and Kofi and Curbelo were named first team preseason All Big Ten. Uh, to the no, 11 player first team yeah, All Big Ten. I saw, I saw that. Was there a voting breakdown? I didn't see a voting breakdown. I like, don't know if I saw. A was there a breakdown. tie for the 10th spot? Like, how does that happen? I, I don't know. I have no idea. <laughs> um, uh, is that surprised? Would you have gone with Kofi as the Big Ten Player of the Year? I mean, there's about four or five options. I know. I mean, I think he's, I think he's kind of viewed as the the best of the five, but or six really, if you count Jaden Ivy. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I wasn't really shocked. I wouldn't. I wouldn't say that. I mean, I. Um, he wasn't. He was unanimous first team. He wasn't a unanimous player of the year. Correct. Oh, I didn't see that. I, I didn't. He was unanimous. He was unanimous selection to the first team which obviously doesn't surprise me this was media uh, right was, or was this coaches this was uh media yeah this was media um yeah so i mean no i don't think i was really surprised by it i think it, it could have been any of those six guys we talked about but uh, i think he was probably the favorite going into it i'm not seeing many of those other guys get as you know much um, national player of the year, mm -hmm. you know, consideration. I've seen Kofi's name mentioned some of those conversations, you know, um, after what's his name, Drew Timmy. But um, yeah. so, yeah, I, I mean, I don't, I don't think I was totally shocked by that. Corbello surprised you first team all big 10. I mean, kind of surprised me going into the off season. Yes. But I'm seeing his name pop up everywhere. I mean, his, his name's getting mentioned in, all American list list. So that's no, true. I that's mean, at this point, no, it doesn't true. surprise me, but yeah. Had you asked me that before the, this whole off season or this whole preseason um, circuit started? Yeah. I would have been, I would have been surprised by that, but I'm seeing, I mean, I've seen media people that have him as an all American and not Kofi. So, mm -hmm. so no, I mean, that doesn't surprise me. I I'll say it. I've said it once. I'll say it again. I think Trent Frazier is getting a lot getting the short end of this um, and we'll see what happens. I think he's a defensive player of the year candidate and could mm -hmm. be really, he's going to be relied on make score a lot of points for Illinois. So, um, but no, I mean, at this point, no, that doesn't surprise me with Curbelo. I think it's, we've talked about, it. I think it's those six. I think it's Kofi Jackson Davis, Dickinson, Liddell, Ivy, and Travion Williams. I mean, I think those Travion wasn't even a unanimous, um, first team selection actually. So um, the unanimous ones were Kofi uh, Jackson, Davis Dickinson, Liddell and Ivy. Um, so I don't know. It's, I think that's where really where the, the heart of it is. We've talked about it a lot. I mean, that's this college basketball season is going to be dominated by post players. And a lot of them yeah. are going to be in the big 10. That's crazy. Cause the NBA yeah. is total opposite. I know. Well, it's cause these players aren't going to go to the NBA. Yeah. Not that they're not going to go to the NBA, but I don't know that these, I don't know that Kofi, Dickinson, Liddell, Travion Williams are going to have much of an NBA career. They're not the style of players that the, go to the NBA. Trace, Dax, Trace, Trace Jackson Davis, maybe. I think he's probably the most likely of the group. But those other yeah. ones, Drew Timmy, I mean, he's not a 
I, I mean, I, I think that's probably, I think that's why this has shifted because those players, I mean, if Kofi was going to be a draft pick, he'd be gone. Yeah. Or, I think a lot of these guys would be. So it's just, you know, guards, it's, if you're a six, four, six, five, six, six guard or a wing guy after one or two years, you're that good. You're gone. Like that's, that's it. Point. But you know, the post players point. stick around because they just don't have as much of a, that's why Luke Garza played for 16 years at Iowa. I mean, yeah. he didn't really, he's not going to have a, a pro career in the NBA I and mean, he'll go, I don't know where he's at right now, but you know, that's just how it works in college basketball right now. So yeah, not, doesn't yeah. really shock me. It's a good point. It's a good point. I didn't think of that. Um, so I just realized this, that um, we're going to have one more episode after this before the season starts. So Correct. we could have done our Illinois focus stuff next week, but I was prepared for it this week. So <laughs> We're gonna we're gonna talk Illinois this week, and maybe we'll talk national picture next week. Um, that's your producer's fault by uh, not counting the days, right? Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, we so, still have a ways till the actual season starts. It's yeah, still, we still eight got, days away. <laughs> yeah, seven once this is released. Yeah, so yeah. I didn't do my math right, but we're gonna talk Illinois this week. Um, we'll just run down the schedule real quick. We already touched on the first three: Jackson State, Arkansas State, at Marquette. And then the Hall of Fame Classic in Kansas City, um, starting against Cincinnati. And then you either get Arkansas or Kansas State. Oh, I'm hoping for a Kansas State. Multiple reasons. I'm hoping for Kansas State. Um, back hey, at home Craig, against why is that? UT Rio Grande Valley. Big Ten ACC against Notre Dame. Then a couple Big Ten games. And then you host Arizona, St. Francis, Pennsylvania. Bragging rights versus Missouri. Back in St. Louis. Um, on December 22nd, and then the final non-conference game, you host Florida A and M. I know we talked about the schedule when it was released months ago, but now that we're a week away from the season, what do you think of the non-conference schedule? So I've looked at the schedule a lot. Um, There are certainly games in there that Illinois could very well lose but there's nobody in there that really scares me. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not going to sit here and say that Illinois is going to run the table on the non-conference schedule, especially now knowing that they're not going to have their best player for the third game of the year against a very good Marquette team. Um, but there's, there's no other, I mean, yes, Marquette, Cincinnati, Arkansas, Kansas state, Notre Dame. Those are all good programs. But I don't know that there's anybody in there that really, really intimidates me uh, from Illinois' perspective. So if I was going to predict anything, I say there might be a couple losses in there, maybe. Mm -hmm. But I would probably be, if I was going to bet money on anything, I'd probably say, I don't know how many total games would be. I would say maybe one loss. I think think it's very reasonable that they can make it through the non-con with just one loss. Yep. I think two may be more likely because just because something might happen, um, especially if we don't know the status of Trent. We don't, I mean, obviously we know the Kofi thing. Uh, stuff could happen. So I'm not going to say it's it's not, you know, that they're going to look flawless. But uh, I would say I'd probably bet one loss, but I wouldn't be shocked if there were two. So going off Ken Palm, which is, would you say that's the best barometer? Yeah, from an analytical standpoint, yeah. Illinois was three. What is Illinois? So five, three, three or five. Arkansas is the highest ranked non-conference opponent on Ken Palm at 15. Yeah. Notre Dame is 27. Arizona is 47. Kansas state is 82. Marquette is 87. Missouri is 96. So Arkansas might be the lone, like, uh uh-oh. That this is going to be a game. Notre Dame's better than I expected. I did not expect to see Notre Dame at 27. So that either. could be a good Big Ten ACC matchup, better than we thought it would be once Kofi announced he was coming back. But I'm right there with you. I I could see them definitely losing to against Arkansas. I think that is a straight up coin flip game. It's going to be a great basketball game. But other than that, I don't see them. I mean, there's probably going to be close games there. They're, they're yeah, I'll, I'll guarantee there's going to be a couple close games there just because of the nature of the sport, but I don't see too much difficulty in this non-conference schedule. 
And remember, no. Ken Palm predicted them to start the year 17 and 0, which would be running through the non conference undefeated. So, right. I just really hope they win uh, against Mizzou. I yeah. Just, uh, I <laughs> yeah. don't want to. Yeah, I don't want to live live through another. Uh, I don't want to live through that again. Yeah. Just beat so, Mizzou. so circle that November twenty third, likely Arkansas game. If it's not Arkansas, it's going to be Kansas State, which has Bruce Weber coaching, Mark Smith playing. So one of that that day, whoever they're playing, it's going to be a, a good game that you want to watch. Mark Smith, <laughs> <laughs> right? Um, November 29th, a week late. The next week is Notre Dame. That'll be a good one. And then December 11th is the the marquee non-conference home game, uh, Arizona. Well, I guess Notre Dame's home too. So both of those are marquee yeah. uh, non-conference home games. And then December 22nd is Bragging Rights back in St. Louis. It's no longer the Bush Bragging Rights game, apparently. I see that on the schedule now. It's the McBride right. Holmes yep. Bragging Rights game, which just doesn't sound right. But at least we're getting it. At least we're getting that game. The thought has crossed my mind to drive the four hours to St. Louis to go to that game, but likely oh, not yeah. going to happen. Likely not going to happen. But I loved. I would love to. <laughs> I covered that game every year. I was at WCIA, so we're both thinking like a. I don't know how many non-conference games there are. A one loss, probably yeah. non-conference schedule. Uh, so looking at the Big Ten, uh, there's the that random week that you play a couple Big Ten games in December, which I actually love getting some some good games in the early season. Uh, Illinois draws Rutgers at home on Friday, December 3rd, and then they go to Iowa December 6th on the Monday. So those are those first two. Um, and then they're at Minnesota starting January 2nd, host Maryland at Nebraska, host Michigan, then Purdue at Maryland, host Michigan State at Northwestern, host Wisconsin, couple on the road in the state of Indiana against the Hoosiers, and then at Purdue, back home for Northwestern, a couple on the road at Rutgers at Michigan State, host Ohio State, travel to Michigan. That's the CBS game, February 27th, circle the day. And then close out the regular season, hosting Penn State and Iowa. What do you think of the conference schedule? You said you've been looking, doing a lot of looking at the schedule. What do you do think? You think I sh- do you think I should go to Michigan on February How far 27th? Is it? How far is it from South Bend? Maybe three hours. I don't remember. Yeah. You could. I might. I might. Um, I mean, I, the Big Ten is the Big Ten. Um, there's going to be plenty of chances to get tripped up there. Um, you know, going to Iowa doesn't scare me as much anymore as it has the past few years. Doesn't mean that's a game they're definitely going to win. Um, yeah. Seeing Michigan twice is certainly is certainly something to to consider, uh, and Purdue twice. I mean that's <laughs> that's that's your competition. Mm-hmm. Uh, Michigan and Purdue, seeing both of those teams um, two times each is is definitely something to to consider. Um, I think it comes down to those three teams. So whoever you know shows shows up in those. In those games, I don't know how many times those other two play each other, but um, I'm excited. Yeah, I'm looking forward to this. Uh, yeah, there's there's definitely a lot to select. Lot gonna be a lot of storylines. Uh, we've talked about the all the post players in this conference. Um, I mean, I think it's you know I'd say I think it's probably like five or six of the top fifteen players in the country are probably in the Big Ten. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's it's going to be fun. It's going to be a lot yeah. of fun. Yeah. I see about five or six conference losses probably. So 15 and five, 14 and six. Yeah. I mean, I think that that's probably like, what was their conference record last year? I was just thinking that same thing and I'm not sure. Let me look this up because I, I think you're probably right in terms of a number. Uh, they were 16 and four in the conference last year. Um, you said five or six losses. Yeah. Just cause you get Michigan and Purdue twice. So yeah. you're probably two and two. There. Yeah. It's probably right. Um, I mean, I kind of want to be super optimistic and say like four, 
Um, but I think, I think it's probably, I think five or six is probably a realistic number. Uh, I think it could be as few as three or four. And I think it could be as many as <laughs> hopefully not many more than six. Um, I think yeah. seven is yeah. probably not out of the question and eight's not ideal. Um, so yeah, I would, I'd be fine with five or six losses. Yeah, so four, 16 and 4 last year, they did get the two seed in the tournament. Michigan won it at 14 and 3. Iowa was 14 and 6. So if you're that four loss range, four or five loss range, you're in conversations for the number one seed. Once you get to the six, seven, eight, you're going to be uh, between a three and a six seed in the Big Ten tournament, any more than eight, and you're right in the middle. So um, just get one of those top four seeds, get that double buy. Don't have to play till Friday of the Big Ten tournament and go from there. So uh, how many games are on the schedule? Have you counted how many games are in a college basketball schedule? No. Did you do there's, that? Are you doing that now? Yeah, there's 20 conference games. One, two, three, four, five. I think six, there was 12 nods on. 9, 10, 11, 12. So 32 games. So if they go 11 and 1 non con and 15 and 5, 26 and 6, is that a number one seed? Is that what we're setting the bar at? 26 and 6? Probably a two seed. It's a one seed if you win the Big Ten tournament, I think. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. If you go into the, if you win, yeah, if you go 29 and 6 heading into the tournament, that's puts you right there on the one two line. Yep. Right there winning the tournament. So I take it. Yeah, I'd take it, but I'd also take yeah. like a three or four seed and winning a few games in the tournament. So, you know, yeah. <laughs> let's be honest. <laughs> That's true too. <laughs> let's That's just not, too. let's just not have it end like it did last year. Yeah. Big 10 tournament, March 9th through the 13th in Indianapolis. Um, no one asked us on the road in Indianapolis second week of March. <laughs> don't, don't tease me. Craig Chode. Don't tease me. Oh man. Uh, that's like the perfect midway point for me and you, right? It is. It absolutely <laughs> is. Yes. So there we go. Uh, ran through the schedule kind of threw out a prediction there about a, a 26 and six season, which would be acceptable one or two seed in the tournament. Um, as long as you beat Missouri, everything's just going to fall into place. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> Excited, excited. It gets started here uh, a week from release date on uh, Tuesday this week. Moving on to football. Um, back to the old Illini football ways. Illinois falls to Rutgers 20-14 to 14 Saturday um, at home to uh, the Scarlet Knights. How much did you watch of this? Any? Uh, I was much more interested in Michigan, Michigan State. Yes. Uh, than, I, than I was Illinois. Um, yeah. So I was definitely had that game on uh, for a lot more. I did flip back and forth a few times when I was able to be in front of a TV, but most of my attention was going, was in uh, East Lansing more yep. so than, than uh, Champaign. Yep. So Christy went to Michigan state. So too did her sister-in-law, her brother's wife also went to Michigan state. So that had the, the big screen while we were at their house, I had Illinois Rutgers on my computer um, with a AirPod in listening. So I watched most of it. Um, I mean, it's just the offense is so boring. Yeah. I mean, it's and I, I will say, I mean, I when uh, after the first couple of drives, I said it earlier in the show, I was really railing on Brandon Peters that he can't sustain drives and he can't do this and that and not 10 minutes later he throws a 52 yard touchdown pass to isaiah williams right down the middle which i tweeted this after that play isaiah williams is faster than any defensive back that Rutgers could throw out there like he can get over the top of the defense you just got to have someone that can throw a ball 45 plus yards and we hadn't seen that we hadn't seen that from this illinois offense this season and Peters completes it. He he goes 14 for 19, 190 yards, two touchdowns, uh, 82.3 QBR. All in all, he played great. I mean, he did exactly what they need him to do to win football games. But the run game couldn't get anything going. 107 yards on the ground after 357 mm -hmm. against Penn State. I, I don't know what happened. We, we were talking about it last week when we were making our picks. Is 
is Illinois going to continue to do what they did at Penn State with the – they call it the barge package with seven offensive linemen. Again, I wasn't watching every single play, but I watched 90%, and I didn't see hardly any barge package. It was back to shotgun, read options that wasn't working. I, I don't understand it. I, I don't get it, and I don't know if it's Tony Peterson or Bielema. Tony Peterson, the offensive coordinator, I don't know if it's him or if, Be- if it's Bielema making these calls, but – it worked so well last week and you didn't come out and try to establish it again. It, it, it doesn't make a lot of sense. That's, I think that's what it boils down to. And Rutgers adds nothing to the big 10. So if you lose to him, you need to re you need to evaluate things. Cause it's, yeah, it, it was not good. You had fans excited. I know Penn state wasn't pretty like both teams played bad, but you did go in and you beat a top 10 team. To win, you got to, build, yeah. you got to build some momentum, and they came out and laid an egg, laid an egg. Disappointing. Yep. Nope. Not not much else to add. It's it's not pretty, and uh, I'm not sure that Bielma Ball will ever be pretty. Um, oh yeah, that's that's for sure. But uh, I just hope that someday it just results in wins. Yeah, but I mean, more consistent basis. But right now, it's just it's ugly and it's not consistent. And it's just confusing. And it's, yeah, you just lost to Rutgers. So it's like this the second time in the last four or five years that Rutgers just came to Champaign and won because they beat Levy, yeah. I think, in his first or second year. Um, I told you last week they could win three more games or they could win zero more games. Yeah. And I would not be shocked at either one. I, I still think so. they beat Northwestern. So I think there's one more win out there. Sure. Um, sure. You were talking about Bielema Ball, but. His teams at Wisconsin with Russell Wilson and and was it Scott Tolzien? Like, well, yeah, they would when they have Russell Wilson. Well, yeah, but <laughs> they would control the clock. They would run the ball, and if they weren't successful running the ball, they'd have like a third and five, and they would have patterns that they were consistently converting those third downs, and you could trust the quarterback. Like, if it's third and five or six, right now with Illinois, I'm like, all right, here comes like a screen like a screen out wide or a, um, a bubble screen. That's what I'm talking about. A bubble screen out wide that two cornerbacks are going to shed their blocks and make a tackle for a loss of three. Like it's just not making a lot of sense. So it's frustrating because everyone was pretty high after the Penn state win, but um, Illinois falls to three and six, um, two and four in the big 10. Um, they travel to Minnesota on Saturday uh, hitting the road against the Big Ten West leader now, the Minnesota Golden Gophers. Uh, it is a noon kick on ESPN2, noon Eastern time on ESPN2. Uh, line came out Sunday, Minnesota minus 14 and a half, over under a 44. Uh, so everything going Minnesota's way here. Do you have any thoughts on this one? Any? I saw Minnesota lost another one of their running backs for the year. So they got Ibrahim yeah. out and Bryce Williams. Not Bruce that Williams. Bruce Williams. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, uh, no, they're they've not been the most consistent team in the conference. But as you did mention, they are leading that division. So um, four wins in a row for Minnesota. It'll probably be five wins in a row for Minnesota. Um, yeah, I mean they're down they're down running backs, but I just I mean can Illinois pull this one off yeah sure absolutely they just beat after weeks, yeah but after that they can do whatever except beat well, Ohio I, state or michigan or michigan state well yeah that's not happening <laughs> um but uh yeah i mean i don't i don't really think they'll win this game but you know I, they've surprised me before but yeah. they have to they have to look a lot different than they did this week yep running out the uh other big 10 scores from last week maryland squeaks by indiana at home 38 35 minnesota we just touched on uh, beats Northwestern in Evanston, 41-14. Purdue, five better than Nebraska at Nebraska. Wisconsin beats Iowa by 20, 27-7. I think Iowa's offense yeah. looked worse than Illinois' offense on Saturday. Mm-hmm. Uh, Penn State, 11, nine-point win over Penn – or Ohio State, nine-point win over Penn State. And then the game of the week, Michigan State at home takes down Michigan, 37-33. Michigan was up pretty big, I think. Um, I don't remember the exact score, although I was watching the whole game. Um, Kenneth Walker scored all five touchdowns. Is that five touchdowns? So. 
Yeah. All five touchdowns, Kenneth Walker, one of them, he almost, and I don't understand how players keep doing this, almost fumbled it before the goal line, like where they let go of it, like celebrating before, like hold on to the ball till you're like in the stands, guys. Like what the heck? So that's where we're at. Um, I got the Big Ten standings here just because we're getting close to the end of the season. Michigan State and Ohio State are both 5-0 and on the east side of the Big Ten. Michigan's 4-1. and and then Maryland, Penn State, two and three, Rutgers, one and four, Indiana, zero oh and five. So three team race over there now with Penn State at uh, two and three in the conference. Michigan State, Ohio State, and Michigan uh, battling for the East crown. The West, like I said, Minnesota is your leader at four and one. Wisconsin and Purdue and Iowa are all three and two. And then you have Illinois at two and four, Northwestern at one and four, and Nebraska at one and five. So if it ended today, Michigan State and Minnesota in the title game. I guess Michigan State gets that. They were listed above Ohio State, so I guess they would get the tiebreaker. But there won't be a tiebreaker because those two teams play each other here in a couple weeks. Power rankings time. How are yours looking, Logan? Well, you know what, Craig? You didn't do them. I, no, I did. I did okay. them. Um, but I'm looking at a couple things right now, and I'm I might be – doing some maneuvering even more okay um, than i already have you need some time you want me to go through my whole 14 for, so you can have some no time? i don't i don't need you to do that i'm just i'm just reassessing really what i want to do here because there's one team in particular that i didn't realize how bad they actually are and they're really <laughs> bad and i'm just wondering if i don't have them low enough that's what i'm looking at right now and I bet you know who I'm talking about. <laughs> it's one of two, but I'm not sure who. Oh, man, they're bad. I might have to lower them even more. I'm going to. Go, you go ahead. You start with your okay. bottom three or whatever you want right. to do. My bottom team has not changed for like six weeks now, maybe longer. Uh, Northwestern is still on the bottom for me. They're three and five. Um, have They've got one Big Ten win. Uh, I think they beat Rutgers, actually. Uh, if I can remember correctly, but they're three and five. They remain at 14 for me. Logan, are you ready or do you need me to keep going? Uh, I have Northwestern at 14 okay. as well. Northwestern at 14 um, as well. Okay. Yeah, that's that's that's, that's not no changed sh- yet. Okay. You had Rutgers at 13. I'm assuming they're not there anymore. They are not there, no. Uh, this is where I'm, I'm trying to decide um, between two can, teams. Okay, I can go. Um, go ahead. Indiana has dropped one spot. Yeah. Down to number 13. Uh, yeah. They were 12 last yeah. week. They're two and six. Haven't really looked competitive uh, in the Big Ten. So they dropped down to number 13 uh, from 12 where I had them last week. Yeah. I'm doing that as well. I hadn't done that. I had them a couple spots higher for some reason. I hadn't really given it much thought. And I'm looking at it now. I'm like, oh, that's just wrong. Uh, yeah. Indiana is my 13 as well. Okay. Uh, moving after on to some- 12. After what? Uh, after some maneuvering is all I was going to yeah. say. So. Is that the team you were talking about? It is. It is. Yeah, yes. that's what I thought. Indiana. I was going between that and Nebraska because they're the only one in something teams there. But yeah. uh, number 12 is where I put Illinois this week. I had them at 10 last week. I I mean, I didn't really think they were 10, but wanted to give them some credit for beating Penn State. So I think this is more, more of the right spot at three and six. They dropped two spots from 10 to number 12. Yep. I have Illinois there as well. Okay. And then 11, I moved Rutgers up from 13 to 11 after their win. So our bottom four are the exact same. Our bottom four is identical, Craig. Okay. Identical. It, it's getting to be that time of year where you, you're you really seeing mm-hmm. where teams actually belong. Uh, mm-hmm. So you kick off the 10 here, going 10 to 1. You kick this off. I have Nebraska at 10. Okay. Um, I have them moving down a couple spots. Um, they – who did they play this weekend? Lost to Purdue. We just talked home. about this. Yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, I mean, I they've shown s- s- moments of mediocrity. I won't say greatness, um, yeah. but right now, I just I don't have a ton of faith in them. So I have them right now at ten. Yeah, I toyed with that. Um, I don't have them quite there. I, I move Maryland up one spot from eleven, but I I'm just not liking what Maryland's doing. So I've got Maryland at ten, even though they're five and three, two games above five hundred. Um, I've only got them at 10 right now. And then I've got Nebraska at nine. 
and I have Maryland at Maryland nine. At nine. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We've kind of both thought the same thing about Nebraska that they should be better than this. So I think we're yep. ranking them higher than their record shows. But, yep. um, but yeah, that's that's where they fall right now. Eight, I think eight and seven are probably the same for us. I don't know if they're in the uh, same I, order. Purdue at eight. Same here. And Minnesota at seven. Same here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yep. Neither of them moved for me. Nebraska, Purdue, and Minnesota did not move from last week for me. Seven, eight, nine. Uh, Nebraska moved down to Maryland, Purdue up one, and Minnesota stayed. Yeah. At seven. Mi- so. Minnesota's creeping into that territory with the the next level of of teams here, but they're, I don't think they're quite there yet. Uh, who, I don't think so, they are, but my number six, I'm not really sure about them anymore. I think we got the same one then. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of there's some change here two through six, but I have Iowa falling down three spots to number six. Exact they same. Bad against Wisconsin. Yep, exact same. And number nineteen, Iowa dropping three yeah. spots for me down to yep. number six. Wisconsin and had was, held that spot for a long time. Yep, but and but, Wisconsin has now moved themselves into the top five, and I have yep. them at five. Yep, same for me. I mean, Wisconsin beat Iowa, so you can't have the Logan Lee rule. You can't have. Iowa above Wisconsin because they just beat them. But I also have Wisconsin at five. I have a feeling that there might only be one difference in our rankings this week. So give me four through one. Uh, four through one. Penn State, Michigan, Michigan State, Ohio State. Bingo. Same. <laughs> the so we only just difference we have is nine and ten. Nebraska and Maryland. Yeah. And I was right there. I almost yeah. went the other way. So I almost, almost had exactly the same. I almost had a little bit different at the bottom, but after looking at that again, I, I realized I had to move Indiana down. Yeah. But other than that, yeah, that's it's starting to, as you said, it's really starting to, you know, kind of work its way to the point where we're comfortable with it. Um, I I don't know what to think about Michigan State, man. I I've I had them, you know, know, we've talked about this whole tier tier thing that I've been doing with the the playoff. And I've had them on that outside looking in tier because I just didn't really think they were on the same level as Ohio State, Michigan, and even Penn State. But I mean, they're they're clearly the number two team of the conference right now. Yeah. Will that hold up? I don't know. Rankings we'll, wise, we'll they're the number one we'll, team. They're ranked higher we'll, than Ohio State. Well, yes, that's that is true. Although I don't know that I see that really um, holding, but. Yeah, I don't know. It's uh, we'll see. But yeah, that's 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 the only thing that makes sense right now. Speaking of your tears, it's that time. Get into it. Yeah, a uh, lot of lot of a uh, lot of movement this week. Um, we had six teams drop out: um, Iowa, Kentucky, Ole Miss, Pittsburgh, SMU, and San Diego State have all uh, said goodbye to their chances at the college football playoff. Uh, I did go ahead and move Michigan State up a tier into that front runner. Um, they are still unbeaten. They did just beat Michigan. Um, there's only a, a, about six unbeaten teams left in the FBS, and they're one of them. So I moved them up a tier. Um, 13 teams left, one of which is UTSA, which that's not actually happening, but they haven't lost yet. So they're still um, you know, on the board technically. Uh, but other than that, after those six dropped, it, it is the 13. It's it's the front runners, as we talked about a lot. It's Georgia, Oklahoma, Cincinnati, uh, Michigan State. And then you have the one loss teams of Michigan, Alabama, Ohio State, and Oregon that I think are all certainly in the mix. Wake Forest is still there as an unbeaten team in the ACC. I don't know that that's going to mean much for them because that schedule is not good. That conference is not good. But they're still an unbeaten team at a Power 5 school, Power 5 conference. Uh, then you also have Oklahoma State, Notre Dame, Baylor, and previously mentioned UTSA kind of hanging on there as well. Don't know that any of those teams gets in. I think it's still coming from that top eight, uh, but uh, that's where we're at. So you can say goodbye to those six teams, Iowa, Kentucky, Ole Miss, Pittsburgh, SMU, and San Diego State. What's the highest of the two loss teams? I've just wiped them all out at this point. Um I don't think there's – I don't think a two-loss team gets in. Yeah. I'm not sure Auburn, who it would be. Auburn, A&M, 
Ole Miss, BYU, Kentucky, Iowa. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's based – I mean, you can just look at the rankings and beat all about the same stuff. But yep. once they get to that two loss or a one loss, if you're a non-Power 5, I pretty much just stop updating it just because it's yeah. – that doesn't happen and it likely won't happen. Um, right. If it does happen, it's probably going to be one of those teams up at the top that might lose a second game or something. But yeah, yep. Any of those like teams that have Alabama. two losses to this point, yeah, like in Alabama or who knows? Probably yeah. Alabama is the most likely candidate, I would say. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's where we're at. All right, moving on to our picks of the week. Uh, a rough week Yikes. for both of us. Rough week Yikes. for both of us. Um, Yikes, I Craig. did. Uh, I did gain two more games, but I was barely above five hundred last week. Uh, I went seven and six, five and two in the big 10, two and four nationally. Um, but I'm proud of the two I got right. The Houston and SMU or the, the Houston over SMU and Fresno state yeah. over San Diego state. I was proud of those two upset picks. Um, Logan went five and eight, four and three in the big 10, one and Yikes. five nationally. So rough week for both of us. Logan still leads in the season. He's 92 and 39. I am 88 and 43 as a reminder we are just picking these straight up we are not going against any spreads or anything like that so four game lead over logan over me in the season standings as we do every week we kick off with siu who lost at northern iowa last week tough loss i was trying to keep up with that while we were at the halloween party on saturday night uh one touchdown loss at northern iowa back at home this week Hosting number twenty Missouri State, who comes in five and three. SIU is six and two. You going with the Salukis or are you going with the Bears? You see that Missouri State is one of these teams that are rumored to, yeah, get get thrown a, a invite to a bigger conference. Yeah, we need that to. I don't know if we have time to touch on all we the don't. realignment going we don't. on because there's a ton right but, now. Uh, I would yeah, love, uh, I would love more so than anything for SIU to be in those conversations. As much as I love the Missouri Valley, I would love for them to jump up to FBS. Yeah, I would like that as well. I don't uh, see it's, it happening. It's not going to happen. No, no. Uh, I'm going to take Southern. Um, I know they they did obviously lose last week. Uh, I still think they're one of the better teams in the conference. And uh, I certainly think they're better than Missouri State. Plus, it's at home. Uh, I'm going to take the dogs. Yeah, I think the, the top four seed that, I and many of Saluki Nation was hoping for in the playoffs is gone. I don't think they can get there, but they can yeah. still get a first or second round technically home playoff game, which would be huge for the school. Um, but yeah, I'm taking SIU as well. Um, back at home, I, I don't think they lose two in a row. Like I said last week, they just don't play well at Northern Iowa in, in the dome. So uh, not thinking too much into it. Uh, Logan touched on UTSA. We're throwing them in the picks this week. They're undefeated, number 16 in the country, 8 0. They're at UTEP, who is six and one, uh, a good conference USA game here. It's a late one, 10 15 on ESPN2. UTSA's coach just sun, just yesterday on Sunday signed an extension with the Roadrunners. Did you see this? I did not. 10 years, 28 million, 2.8 wow. average salary for UTSA's head football coach, Jeff, I think is his first name, Jeff Trailer. Um, so a lot of openings in the state of Texas. FBS power five openings. He's not going anywhere. He signed an extension. You go on roadrunners or I think they're the Niners or are they the not? Miners. Hold they're on. The Miners. Before we do that. Um, when we, when we had the Illinois UTSA game earlier, uh, yeah. who did we pick in that game? I think we both picked Illinois, but we both said it would hmm. be close. Do you think at the time we thought that they would be eight and oh and number 16 in the country? I yeah well not eight no <laughs> I know you made the comment about that they were a good team I thought there was a very good chance that they would be seven and one and their only loss would be Illinois yeah. yes uh, I'm gonna take UTSA yeah. I think they keep rolling um, I don't know that they I don't know I don't follow Conference USA enough to know where they're gonna get tripped up but uh, I'll take them to keep yep. rolling. Uh, Roadrunners keep running. Wiley Coyote doesn't get to him just, <laughs> just yet. Um, wow, look at that. Number 10, Wake Forest, still undefeated. Uh, the ACC slate is not good. So, Wake Forest at UNC, who is four and four, is our best game here. It's a noon kick on ABC. Wake Forest in the top 10, I think, for the first time in program history. 
which now means every single power five school has been in the top 10 in the AP poll. They were the last one that had not. I I saw that Fox college football. Yeah. Fox college put yeah, Fox college football put that on Instagram yesterday. Every single power five school has now been in the top 10 of the AP poll. Have you noticed that Fox college basketball leans very heavily into Illinois? Yeah. They must have a large Illini fan base that follow that account because they are Dude. constantly feeding into that. Illinois fan base on social media is they're like rabid dogs, man. It's unbelievable. They're, they're nuts. Uh, I'm going to take the upset here. I think, I think Ooh. Carolina, I think Carolina ends the magic magical season for wake forest. Wow. Okay. Um, Wake Forest obviously needs to keep winning if they want any shot at playing in the playoff. I don't think it's likely regardless. Although maybe, do you think, I mean, is, is it a guarantee that an undefeated Wake Forest gets into the playoff? Do you think that that's like a, Oh man. I think if it comes down to an undefeated Wake Forest and an undefeated Cincinnati, I think they probably take Wake Forest. I think Cincinnati has better wins on their schedule than Wake Forest. Does. I think so. I don't know. I haven't even looked at this. It I would mean, be Notre so Dame's hard. still seven and one. It would be so hard to keep an undefeated ACC school out. I, I just oh, things would have to fall their way. Things would definitely have to. Fall I was their looking way. at Wake Forest schedule earlier. I know we were just Oregon needs to lose again. Point. Ohio State probably needs to lose again. This is Wake Forest schedule. They have wins against the Old Dominion, Norfolk State, Florida State, Virginia, Louisville, Syracuse, Army, and Duke. What who do they have left? Carolina, NC State, Clemson, and Boston College. I do if, not think they go out of this undefeated. Yeah. If they if they do, if they beat Clemson and NC State, I think that, that boosts it up a little bit. Just just based on reputation for Clemson. NC State's decent. Either way, I don't think they make it out of the season undefeated. And I think they're no, gonna find their I first loss this week at Chapel okay. Hill against okay. the Tar Heels. All right. I'm rolling with Wake Forest. I think they've got some mojo going right now. Um, I didn't believe in them a couple weeks ago, but they keep winning. So I'm gonna keep I'm gonna roll with them. Um, okay. number 14, Baylor. On the road, seven and one at TCU, three and five. TCU in the news this week because they have parted ways with Gary Patterson after 21 years, I think. And they have named Jerry Kill, former Saluki head coach, Jerry Kill, former Minnesota head coach, Jerry Kill, as the interim head coach. This is 3.30 Eastern on Fox, on the Fox, Baylor at TCU. I screwed up last week, Craig, because I did went against Chip. I went against lost. my boy Chip Gaines, and, and I screwed up, and I shouldn't have gone against my boy Chip Gaines and the Baylor Bears. I will not make that mistake again this week. I'm taking Baylor. Okay. You're going with Chip? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. I'll go with Joanna. I'll take Joanna. You can have Chip. Oh. Okay. <laughs> I'm so you're not Baylor taking Jerry. Well. You're not taking Jerry Kill. No, no. Any other uh, year, I would take Jerry, but I don't think TCU is very good. And I, okay. I mean, Baylor's rolling. We'll we'll see. Not a good slate this week so far. Um, you think we can get Chip and Joe on the show? No. <laughs> <laughs> you know how many interviews we struck out with. You think they're coming on? I don't know. Chip, Chip might do it. All right, you reach out. You I'll be our Booker. Him. You be our. Booker. I'll tweet at him. Uh, in the Pac-12, number seven, Oregon, seven and one at Washington, four and four, seven thirty Eastern on Fox. Washington's kind of rebounded from their terrible loss to was it Montana? I think FCS Montana. Uh, Oregon's still kind of rolling. I think they've had some injuries pop up here and there, but they're still seven and one. Oregon or Washington in beautiful. I think, Oregon, I think Oregon's legit. I th- yeah. I think that they're obviously yeah. they they beat Ohio State in Columbus early this season uh as you said they're still rolling at seven and one i'm going to take oregon on the road yep give me the ducks um quack quack that's just the pac-12 so top heavy and it's the top is oregon i just don't see anyone else 
we thought UCLA, we thought Arizona State maybe, but they're just mediocre. So, yeah, give me Oregon and Seattle. And moving to the SEC, uh, Auburn off their big win over Ole Miss, number 12 now. Uh, they're 6-2. and two. They travel to Kyle Field for number 13, Texas A&M, who's also 6-2. and two. Uh, The game time said 3.30. It did not have a network. I'm assuming this is the CBS game. I would assume that Probably. Uh, this is on CBS at 3.30. Who you got, Tigers or Aggies? I'm taking the Tigers for the belt. This is the belt oh, battle. Oh, this is the belt battle. A and M has happy. the A and M has the belt. So they had a bye last week, so they retain the belt. I think they lose the belt this week. War Eagle. Wow. Okay. Tim's gonna be so excited. We got the belt Tim's game on be here. Thrilled. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> um, of course. I'm I'm gonna say the Aggies keep the belt. I'm taking okay. I'm taking Texas A and M at home coming off the bye. Auburn used up all their energy last week in the upset to beat yeah. Ole Miss. Yeah. Moving to the Big Ten. Uh, not a great slate in the Big Ten either this week, but we always say that, and then it turns out to be a great week of college football. Uh, was the only game – actually, no, there's two games. Never mind. Wisconsin, 5-3 and three on the road at Rutgers, 4-4. Four and four, uh, 3.30 start on, I think, Big Ten Network. Who you got? Uh, Wisconsin. Yeah, I think they're Wisconsin, figuring things yeah. out. Rutgers yeah. is not very good. Uh, I think Wisconsin takes this one. Yep, 12-point favorite on the road. That's a huge spread for a road team. I'm going to take Wisconsin as well. Um, man, they just got off to such a bad start. But their three losses are Penn State. Who is it? Penn State. I don't remember. Ohio State maybe? I don't know. But, yeah, um, speaking of, Penn State, they dropped to number 22 in the country. They're 5-3. and three. At Maryland, who's also five and three, this is a three thirty start as well. This one is on FS one. Penn State bouncing Penn back. State. They uh, yeah, bouncing back. They they played with Ohio State. I mean, I think Penn State's yeah. a good team. Um, obviously, they've they've struggled a couple times this year, but uh, I think they're a good team. I think they beat Maryland. Yep, ten point favorites on the road are the Nittany Lions. I'm going to take Penn State as well. Maryland is just. I don't know what to think of them. I thought they were pretty decent to start the year. Then Illinois should have beat them and just haven't really, haven't really shown me much since then. So give me Penn state as well. The reeling Iowa Hawkeyes, number 19, six and two get what they need. They get a game against Northwestern who is three and five late game, seven o'clock on big 10 network. They write the ship. Uh, yeah, they do. Iowa. Yep. yep. Iowa. Uh, this line's probably huge as well. Yeah, well, not as big as I thought. 12. Iowa's 12-point favorite. I'm going to take Iowa as well. Indiana, 2-6, and six, looking to get uh, their first Big Ten win. Are they winless in the Big Ten? They are. Yes. They are 0 5 in the Big Ten. Uh, they travel to the big house, so it's going to be tough. Number nine, Michigan, 7-1, seven 7.30 Eastern time. They get a national audience. They're on Fox. Do they get their first Big Ten win? No, no, Michigan. <laughs> no, no chance. Yeah, we're flying through these. Uh, Michigan, 19 and a half point favorite. Uh, they probably cover maybe by the first half. Uh, give me Michigan as well. Ohio State hits the road. Number six, Ohio State, seven and one. Travel to Lincoln for Nebraska at three and six. This is a noon kick on Fox. So national audience for this one as well. 15 point favorites are the Buckeyes on the road. Yeah, Ohio State. <laughs> Ohio State and the cover. How about that? Uh, Michigan State undefeated, number five in the country. Michigan State. You are hearing that correctly. Michigan State, number five in the country, undefeated, eight and zero. Oh. At Purdue, five and three, three thirty on ABC. Michigan State, three point favorite. Close line here. Who you got? Let me tell you something, Craig. Tell me something. That I don't already know. Every week, every week, the um, no one asked us fairy um, just magically puts <laughs> games into our rundown every week. And uh, I then see these games that the fairy has left me. And I very quickly go through them and I highlight who I think is going to win these games. I do it very quickly. I don't do a ton of research. And this week I did the same thing. I went through and I highlighted every team I think is going to win this game. And those are the you picks that I highlighted Purdue. 
as of right now, I still haven't highlighted anybody in this game. <laughs> oh, <laughs> because Ooh. I don't know. I okay. don't know. Okay. Get off my back. Oh my God. <sighs> I'll give mine. I'm going Michigan State while you're thinking about it. And I'm going to go Purdue. Okay. We'll make it. Okay. We'll, we'll do that. I'm going to take Purdue. Okay. I would like to see Michigan State have more success. Um, and I would like to see them continue to roll. Purdue's already done this once this year. Yep. It's at home. Yep. I'm, I'm going to take Purdue. I'm going to take it. I'm going to okay. do it. I like Sorry it. Sorry to like all it. you Michigan State fans. Sorry to Christy. Um, but boiler up. Boiler I up. like it. I, I'm just – I like this Michigan State team now that I've watched a yeah. couple of their games. No, um, it's fair. They have a high trophy candidate. Ken, yeah, Kenneth Walker is incredible. He's so good. So, yeah, give me Sparty. Um, and then finally, Illinois, three and six at Minnesota, care. six and two, <laughs> uh, noon kick on ESPN two. Is it the first ESPN game of the year for the Illini? I believe so. Well, they had an ABC game. Oh, they and did you know how ABC that game. ended. <laughs> that's true. That's true. That's true. Michigan or Minnesota, 14 and a half point favorite. Uh, Gophers, Gophers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Minnesota. Gophers. Yep. I agree. Uh, Illinois will, uh, if they lose, they're out of bowl contention. That's their seventh loss. So, but they lose and they're out of bowl contention. So there we go. There's our picks. Um, see if I can gain a little bit of ground on the Logan Lee. Anything else college football that we didn't discuss that you would like to touch on? Mm -hmm. No, unless you have any inside sources from Carson Palmer or anybody about who's going to take over. At oh USC. my gosh. I love that though. That was what so sweet. That was, that was so cool. Um, our boy, Dan Patrick caused, uh, no, no further questions, your honor. Let's I'm let's go on, to uh, the uh, front lines here and front pages. And I don't see anything that we need to mention. So, all right. Uh, world series. World Series action. There is no game on Monday night, so we can discuss it, and this will come out before the next game. Uh, the Braves lead at 3-2. to two. They had a 3-1 lead, and Houston staved off elimination on Sunday night. Have you been watching? Have you been watching yeah, any of this? Yeah, when I can. Uh, I listened to most of the game last night in the car, yeah. um, but I've had it on just about every night um, that I've been able to. Yeah. Uh, this, I, this Braves team is fun. I mean, it's a fun story. We've talked about them before. You know, everything that happened after they lost to Cunha, they went out and got about four four outfielders yep. to fill the gap. And they're, Money just, ball, they, man. they're just playing really well. And it's just a fun story. And everybody wants to hate on the Astros, and I understand that. Um, they've certainly done things to make you want to hate on them. They're yeah. a good team, too. Um, and they're they're not going to – they're going to fight. Um, this is probably their last run as that infield that's been yeah. dominating. Uh, it's had, they've had the – same exact infield for all their playoff games for this entire run they've been on since yep. since they've rebuilt into this powerhouse. Um, I imagine that that'll be broken up this year after Correa leaves. Um, but the Braves are fun. Lose. You don't you don't need him. The Cubs need him. Okay, the Cubs are getting Javi back. The Cubs aren't. Oh, man. This is okay. talk for another episode. Go ahead. Yeah, um, I know. I'm just the, the Braves are fun, and here they are throwing out rookies and to mm-hmm. start these games as openers and stuff. Like it's just nuts. Um, yeah. I saw. I was. I had the game on the radio last night. I had to turn it down, and we stopped to get food. And the next thing I know, it was a four nothing game. Yeah. And Adam Duvall hit that grand slam. I think it was in the first inning or second inning, and I'm like, all right, let's go. And then yeah. the next thing you know, it's like six to four or whatever, and um. But yeah, Freddie Freeman hit the longest home run I've ever yeah, seen it. In I, I didn't watch Ooh. it. I haven't seen that, but yeah. Ooh. Ooh, yeah. It was a rocket. Um, They're fun. Yeah. I, I turned um, football. I turned Sunday night football on the TV at the start. And then I got the update that they hit a grand slam and me and Christy are both like, all right, we got to We got to watch baseball on the TV. And then I pulled up the football game on my computer Um but yeah, it just it just I 
I'm worried now that it's going back to Houston. Oh yeah, for sure. I, I think Houston might be the favorite now. I think probably. Um, I think last night was Sunday night was the Braves' chance, and they didn't blow it. They just no, they just got to win one more. But yeah, we'll have to see. I think it's certainly certainly on the table. But uh, would you like to comment? Been announced? Go ahead. I don't think so. Would you like to comment on the arm barn? Craig? Oh my God. Uh, starters have been <laughs> starters have been set. Max Fried and Luis Garcia. Max Fried for Atlanta, Luis Garcia for Houston. Uh, so it's go to ridiculous. The, go to the arm barn. <laughs> it's absolutely ridiculous. I don't know what else to say. Um do you, uh, I, I don't want to start talking about PETA. Oh my god. Um <laughs> it's stupid. I will just say that. Uh, I love that you're getting fired up and you and you have a mess, mustache. It just like the whole thing just <laughs> just makes me laugh. <laughs> uh, tickets are as low as three hundred and two dollars if you want to go down to oh. Houston this week in Atlanta. Since we were there, we were like keeping an eye on to see if any f- happened to fall. Cheapest tickets were like twelve hundred dollars. Yeah, and it was insane. We did go down there Thursday night. Um, we had dinner down there Thursday, which the game for game three was Friday. So we missed the, we didn't obviously didn't go during the huge crowds, but went down for dinner Thursday. It's a really cool area. It's the same. I think the same company designed it that did ballpark village in St. Louis and uh, fourth street live in Louisville. Um, so a bunch of bars and, and restaurants and, and stuff right outside the gate. So cool environment, but um, missed the crowd. We did try to go. Sunday when we uh, were heading out of town and it was pretty crazy, like eight hours before the game, we were there at like noon and you couldn't really get into a parking garage or anything. So, so yeah, um, heading to game six, uh, Tuesday at uh, eight Oh nine on Fox. These Anything else? Ridiculous. Oh, these, wait, these mm, takes way too long. These, this, I saw the tweet today of that listed off all the get times that the games ended east coast time it's bonkers like it's mm-hmm. it's midnight like if you if you're trying to market your game to a younger audience like mm-hmm. have the games be when it's when they're awake <laughs> like it's yep. like, like six hours past people's bedtimes like yep. it's just it's nuts the only like, one i think i was able to stay awake last night yeah i stayed awake last night but friday and saturday i was out in like the seventh inning I, I I've stayed away stay from up. most of them. I was out last night. I didn't, I didn't see the end of it. As soon yeah. as we got home, I went to sleep. So yeah. Anything else sports related, Logan? Mm, no, no, I'm, I'm ready for basketball season. As we all are basketball season a week from a week from release date of this episode, we will, um, we will have basketball. We will have a basketball game to watch and talk about. I believe that might be one of the BTM plus games though. So you might have to subscribe if you want to watch that. That's the I only reason I subscribe to enough Craig show. I subscribe to enough. Don't yell at me. This is just madness. Don't yell at me. Uh, Hey, you watched the movie. Dude. Dude. Go see Dune and go see Dune on the largest screen possible. I say that as a fan of movies, but also just somebody that just appreciates a fun time. We just haven't had a big screen experience like this in well over a year and a half. I mean, it we just it just Star hasn't Wars? existed. Or Star Avengers? Wars, and then I mean, yeah, Avengers was the summer of 2019. Yeah, we just haven't had that. You know, we had 2019 was a good movie year. And then the world ended and we just haven't had these type of experiences. So so to finally have this movie out, I drove to, I drove two hours to go see it in Fort Wayne just because I wanted to see it on an IMAX screen. The closest IMAX to me is about an hour away, but it's currently being renovated. So I can't even go to that. South Bend doesn't have an IMAX? No, no. Oh man. No. The second closest one is an hour and 20 minutes away up in Portage, Michigan, just south of Kalamazoo, which is a celebration cinema, which I could have gone to, but it just made more sense for me to drive two hours to go to an AMC IMAX and get the discount. So that's what I did. 
just so I could wow. see this movie on the largest screen possible. And it was worth it, I will admit. But for those of you that live in a city that have a, a large format screen close to you, go see this movie. Just just do it. Just Okay. It's not... Go ahead. Yes. For those... I've obviously seen the marketing and the trailers. Yes. What is this? What is this movie about? Dune. So Dune is based on a book that was written in like the sixties. It's already been made into a movie once, I think in the eighties, it has some fans, but it wasn't done very well. Um, I don't know the, all the lore. I did not read the books. I don't know a lot of the story. Um, this movie is the first part of this first book or whatever they're doing. I don't know how they're going to do it, but they, they didn't really market it that way because they didn't really have confirmation that they were making a second one. But this movie is a lot of setting things up. Um, it is takes place. It's a sci-fi fan, you know, sci-fi type of movie. Um, it, it's kind of Star Wars, kind of Lord of the Rings, kind of Game of Thrones. I mean, it's just kind of a, you know, a lot of those type of shows and movies that we're familiar with took things from dune like when that book was written so a lot of like the matrix like all that stuff really happened because because of that original book so um it is a it's yeah it's like a it's an epic um sci-fi story about a about a family mainly about a boy uh played by timothy chalamet um and and his family and it's about power and um politics and i mean it's just it just kind of takes all these things into one um but as i said this movie is it does a lot of um setting up the story uh just because just go into it knowing that you're not not everything is going to be resolved in these two and a half hours that you sit in this movie theater and it's not going to be the most action-packed movie either because as i said a lot of it is just kind of setting things up but it is a visual masterpiece um it'll it'll win every single technical award at the oscars um, has a great cast, uh, tremendous cast. They're all great. Um, and it's, it's just a good time. So if you have a large format screen, whether that is an IMAX or a big D as they call it in champagne, which makes me laugh, um, or whatever the case may be, go see it there. Um, because don't watch it on HBO max. I know it's available on, H on HBO max for another couple weeks. And I know plenty of people have watched it on there. And if you watch it, if you want to watch it a, another time on HBO Max, that's fine. But like, go see this movie on a, on a big screen. If you cannot get to a large format screen, still go to a theater to see this movie. Watching it at home on your big TV the, for the first time will not do this film justice. So there you go. Go see Dune. I, uh, I think it was one of the previews for no, before No Time to Die. Probably, yeah. I think yep. it was, and it's, I just watched it. I was like, "This is like, this is Star Wars." It's yeah, it's Star Wars. I see. I hear a lot of people compare it to the Lord of the Rings, and I'm not a big the, Lord of the Rings fan. I fan. haven't seen those. Um, I'm not a huge fan of those, but they're very good movies, and they are. They were all award winning movies, and this will be one of those type of things. It's yeah, you know, it's people out on a journey trying to accomplish something. Um, it's Star Wars esque, but there's no big, you know, there's no lightsaber scenes and all this stuff. I mean, it's not as action packed as you might expect. Um, the the future movies, however many of these they do, might be more of that. I have no idea, uh, but this one really was not. But either way, it's it's still worth going to see. So Timothy Chalamet, I think I saw Zendaya. Timothy Chalamet, uh, yes, Chalamet, Zendaya, Oscar Isaac, uh, yeah. Rebecca Ferguson um jason momoa yeah um, a bunch of people that have been in big blockbuster franchises are in this movie um yeah. it's it's a pretty stellar cast so, okay score yeah oh gosh i i i wasn't i'm not prepared for that what um i don't know i didn't have that up so five uh, I, five out of five no it's not a five it's not a five uh i think it's either a four or four and a half um, which still for this year, it's still the best movie I've seen so far this year. So, uh, oh my God. Oh my God. You're I'm under pressure. I'm under pressure. I can't think. How I can't are you think. not What's prepared the right for this? This 4. is what 5. you do. 4.5. Ding. I'm sorry. I had 16,000 other tabs open. I forgot to open that one. 
So 4.5. So far to this date, it is the best movie of the year. It will win every single technical award at the Oscars. It'll be nominated for Best Picture. It will not win Best Picture. It will probably not be nominated for any actor awards just because there's so many of them. And other than Timothy Chalamet, they don't really do a lot. But still, 4.5. Excellent movie. Go see it. Do you want to get anything about Eternals off your chest before you go see it this week? I'm just bombed. I'm bombed. I haven't even seen it yet. I've muted everything possible. I've been so excited for this movie. When the premiere happened, I muted everything just because I did not want to see it. And the few things that have slipped through the cracks have not been good. And I'm bummed. So I'm still going to go into it optimistic. I see it Thursday night. Still excited to see it. Um, I'm expecting it to be another visual type of movie. It's probably I've heard it has it is one of the best looking Marvel movies. Um, I just had a lot of high hopes for this just because Chloe, Chloe Zhao just did uh-huh. Nomad Land, which won Best Picture. And it has this great cast and it's the MCU. And I just thought this just and I had I had heard some things that it was like Marvel was saying it was like one of their best things they've ever done. But uh doesn't sound like that's really the case. So I will have more to say on that uh, next week. But uh, as of <laughs> right now. I'm trying to at least temper my expectations. My one question with this is, yes. is Eternals like the next Avengers? Are well, all these I mean, people going to get their their own? Is it, Was that the plan? Like, I, I honestly don't know. Um, I don't know what they're doing with this. They have enough characters. I don't think yeah. they need to be building more off of more and more stuff like this. I'm sure there has been a plan to do more than one Eternals movie. Mm-hmm. Now, if this one totally bombs, which I won't rule it out, but it's probably not likely just because it is Marvel. Um, I don't know that I don't know what the future will be with them. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't think they were, I don't think the plan was for them to be the Avengers. Okay. Um, I also don't really know the story of how this is supposed to play into um the whole timeline and everything else. So yeah, I don't know. As I said, trying to go into it with an open mind, but uh, it's not, it's not, not pretty. So, yeah. I mean, it's impossible to replicate what Avengers in that. Oh yeah. The first four phases did. It's incredible. All right. Anything else uh, you want to get off your chest or you want to talk about? I did watch the hamster. Yeah. What'd you think? I'm pretty sure you had mentioned, did you you mention that the week before? Because I'm pretty sure as soon as I saw it come up, I'm like, oh, wait, I know who this is going to be. Either you said it or something. I knew I who it have. was. I knew I who it was have. before I even started watching it. Because I think that one of the judges said it, and I was like, oh, I think that's a good guess. I think the, I, I might have the voice Because I, I could just tell by the voice during the, you know, when they talk about their, give the hints or whatever they do. I'm like, yeah. I know. I know who that is. Yeah. So there was, did you watch him singing? Though. Did you watch oh, him yeah. singing? And uh, was it oh, Spanish? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I was it like, was "Holy good. cow!" Yeah, it was good. For those that don't know, spoiler alert, mass singer, spoiler alert. Burr, burr, burr. It was Rob Schneider. He was yeah. hilarious. He was dancing yeah. all over the stage. Was good. Like, yeah, yeah, it, it was, was great. Good. It was great. I'm behind, that. so I can't talk about what's happened the last two or three weeks. I'm because I'm a couple episodes behind, but okay. All right. Anything else? No further questions, Your Honor. All right. Remember, uh, go vote on our Twitter poll, Twitter page, uh, who you think is going to win the Big Ten uh, regular season title. Uh, Also, give us a follow, like, share, subscribe um, this episode so we can uh, get our views up there. Um, Get this out to all your friends. What? You got something? I've already already put in the rundown what our question is going to be for next week. Oh, okay. I haven't looked yet. If you scroll down, you'll see that. (laughs) <laughs> can't wait can't wait to have this discussion go ahead throw your background no up. no throw your background no, i'm not gonna no. worry about the background no okay it's too early craig right. it's too early all right um you know who edits this show so i can just edit out all of your uh all of your seasonal references. we're just gonna it's gonna just start you're gonna start seeing more and more christmas behind me just, every one week. thing every week <laughs> i love it <laughs> i love it i love it All right, we're going to get out of here. I think uh, we timed this pretty well. I don't have my watch on me. I left my phone in the other room. but I have um, no idea. Me neither.
Uh, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Thanks for consuming the content, however you're doing it. We will be back next week uh, talking even more basketball. This is a basketball podcast now, so we're <laughs> chugging right along. Thanks for listening. That's Logan. I'm Craig. We'll see you next week. 52 days till Christmas. Bye.